Brianna Ray from VriIY and I'm here to bring you another crafty video and of course it is, as you all expected, the long-awaited part two to making my own Crocs. I loved doing this DIY. I've actually worn them out a couple of times and I think that they actually went pretty well. Um, I do think that there's still some messier parts that I could totally touch up, but the acrylic layer spray on top of it really kind of helped, I think, trap some stuff in and I think that they still look pretty good. But of course, no Crocs in my experience are complete without the, I can't believe I still didn't look up how to pronounce this, hold on. Gibbets. All right, it's gibbets, all right, I'm doing good. <laughs> all right, so I wanted to DIY some gibbets. Now, um, if you didn't catch this in my last video, this is my first experience with Crocs ever. I have never owned a pair of Crocs, never worn them out, never done anything with them really. Um, so I decided to go the extreme route and do Galaxy Crocs and uh, make some star and moon shaped gibbets for either side. So I actually have this super amazing glow in the dark Sculpey clay that I used for a project quite a while back. I actually used it as a, uh, I made a charm bracelet out of it for my cousin. Um, she was very little at the time and uh, you can see that video up there if you want, but I thought it turned out really great, which also had a bunch of star and moon shapes in it, incidentally, because I mean, what's better to glow in the dark other than stars and moons? But um, as I was trying these on, and no shade, no no harm, but um, I actually ended up getting these in a youth size 2-3 because they didn't quite have my size. They only had a size uh, 7. I think that was the smallest size they had, and I'm anywhere between a 5 and a 6, depending. And honestly, even when I put these on, they're still kind of loose. So as I was thinking about the different ways to do this, I was thinking, well, I could easily sculpt that little like flat back that you see on the actual gibbets. Or I could go the route of, you know, I'm not going to be wearing these out all too often and use some pinbacks. Now, the pinbacks that I have are probably not the best for this because I have the metal ones, but there are like plastic, really comfortable pinbacks actually that you can put on the back of these that I think would make this project super nice. Let's have, actually let me see if I can go show you what I'm talking about to show that these would easily be super comfy. This is what I'm talking about right here. Super nice and bendy and soft. And of course it fits in any pin back really comfortably, just like that. So if you have these and you can easily find these, uh, you know, on Amazon or wherever, uh, that would make a super easy way to create a gibbet with uh, sculpt it, sculpting whatever it is that you want with Sculpey or any other clay and simply gluing it on to a pin back. And that is what I will be doing today. So first things first, as we open this up, Looks like I already had a good chunk cut off. We're gonna need to condition this because it's a little on the older side. Thankfully, it is not as uh, ridiculously stiff as the last clay that I used. It was like a Kato poly clay, I think it was called. All right, I really wanted to get like the technique down of how I was gonna do this, cause I really hadn't done any, I really don't do sculpting a whole lot in general, uh, but I did wanna make sure that I had kind of the technique down on how I was gonna do this before I did the tutorial element. So I did one moon and one star first, and now I am going to show you how I did them, starting with the moon, because frankly, it's a little bit easier. So once I kind of got everything put together, I have used it about a quarter inch thickness of uh, the star might be a little bit thicker. For this guy, however, I'm going to get it just to about that quarter inch thick fl uh, flatness, thickness, whatever. And I'm going to go over it with my rolling pin just to make sure none of my fingerprints or palm prints are kind of indented on it. Now I have this uh, paint cap, really. <laughs> It's almost just slightly too small, so I'm gonna angle it out on the edges here. And this is how I'm gonna create the base for my moon. Of course, you could do multiple different phases of the moon. I am just going to be doing a crescent because I think that is the way that I like them to look. Pop it in, pops right out, thankfully. <laughs> Peel the outside, and then I got an even tinier circle here. I think I got this off of a bottle of fabric paint. Come in just slightly only so that there's enough to cover. Perfect. That is almost exactly the way the last one looked. Come up with the blade to peel. 
peel it off. Nice. Smooth out those edges. Ready to go get baked. And now for the last one is the star. Now I tried this a couple different ways. I've done it a couple different ways in the past. Um, I think that the way that I'm about to do it is probably just going to be the nicest looking for me overall. It's definitely not going to be as thin, but that's what we're going to do. So what I am going to do first is I'm going to go at the top here, pinch in to create my first point, angle a little bit, another pinch, angle a little bit, another pinch, flip it around and it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about it being perfect yet. Pinch fifth time and do our last fifth pinch. So now you can see the shape of the star is kind of forming. Now I'm going to flatten it. And because the pinches have a nice set of points already made for you, you can go back in and define them as you flatten it and eventually create your star shape. Flat. Now I'm just going to pinch in again and keep going until I eventually get the shape of the star. And of course you can uh, use whatever tools you want to make this easier. The more you pinch, unfortunately, the like thicker the center portion gets and I know we probably want to avoid making that too thick. Mine's again maybe a little bit thicker than the moon but that is all right. I also like to use this little rounded tool here because I don't like super harsh stars uh, to kind of hit up in the middle without adding too many finger points. Fingerprints. Finger points. But I think it does a lot for it and it just kind of gives it that nice rounded shape that I like. And here they are, all super beautifully baked. All super beautifully baked. And now all I have to do is glue the backs onto each of them. Of course at this point you could choose to paint whatever you wanted on your little gibbets. I, however, am going to keep mine perfectly plain. I thought it would be cute to put little faces on them, but uh, I'm not going to jazz them up just for the sake of having them for the channel. Um, I'd actually really like to keep these to something that I would wear. So I'm going to stick my pin in one side, put my hand through the back, and of course attach the pin so that it does not go anywhere. And of course one star, which I'll probably put closer to the top and attach. There we have it, and I'm going to let these charge up in the light a little bit before taking them over to my dark bathroom so I can show you how they glow in the dark. Alrighty, let's slip these babies on. They actually look really cute with the uh, gibbets in there. Nobody put me on wiki feet. It's super important that that does not happen to me. I definitely can't really feel the pin backs, which is awesome. And in the dark. Oh, come on! That is so freaking cool! Uh, I wish I knew what angle I was filming at. It's really dark in here. But they definitely glow in the dark. You can totally tell. Right, baby? Well, with all that said, that is all I had to show you today. I wanted to thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I'd love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much, and I hope to see you then. Bye!